the competition to host the Green Climate Fund was really quite intense. Uh, major governments around the world competed for this. I, I think there are a couple reasons why Korea ended up with the winning bid. One, it was a very strong bid technically and, and uh, uh, kind of all the things you look for in a hosting uh, arrangement. Uh, Songdo and Chon really did their homework and, and the Korean government supported it strongly. But also, it is a testament, I think, to the way people see Korea today. Uh, Korea as a source of innovation, Korea as a country that has combined an attention to growth and prosperity while starting to really emphasize more and more with each passing year the sustainability issues and the green side of, uh, of green growth. And so there was a bit of a, a, a bet on Korea that this is the mm -hmm. right kind of place to host a fund that is going to have to be a hub of financing for transformative types of activities. And it was a very interesting choice, obviously. It's not just, it's not just Korea. It's not just Seoul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Songdo, Incheon. And if you go there, it's a, it's a very new, new looking mm -hmm. place. Um, but it, it, it's not a foregone conclusion what happens with the Green Climate Fund. It will be a function of the negotiations uh, do we have a successful, conclusive global agreement by 2015, as the governments have agreed? Do they have a clear vision of the financing vehicles and what we need from each of the financing vehicles? What will the Green Climate Fund do? What will the World Bank do? What will the UN system do? What will the, the Jeff, the, I could go make a long list of institutions that fund in this space, we are not going to see, I think it's safe to say, at the end of the negotiation, all the money that will be needed to go into climate um, financing going through any single channel. It will go through multiple channels. Is there a clear division of labor between those channels? And within that, is there a clear vision for what the Green Climate Fund will do? Uh, I think having it in Korea helps because that helps differentiate it in another way. Uh, it's not in Washington, D.C. with the Bretton Woods institutions. It's not in one of the traditional financial capitals of the world. So it will have to be different just mm. by where it is than the other instruments. And I think that's probably healthy. Uh, it's not an accident, I think, that it's in Asia either, mm -hmm. um, both because Asia will have to contribute significantly to this fund and will also be probably one of the biggest beneficiaries of the fund. So the center of gravity being in Asia on this, uh, this institution could bear a lot of the weight, not all of the weight, but a lot of the weight. But it will depend on where the negotiation goes and uh, do the countries uh, that will ultimately need to vote shares and put money mm -hmm. in, in the fund, uh, do they uh, agree enough that this is the right use of money through this institution? So there's still quite a bit of work to be done but the early steps have been very positive, and Korea's positioned itself well on this. Now, in the next, say, year or two, we'll need to see some decisive movements to, to fill that fund so it's not an empty shell. Mm -hmm.